What's happening guys, it's Griffin Steinfeld. Today we're in the garage, uh, just tinkering on my LS2 out of the Corvette. Uh, this particular motor made 700 horsepower and about 680 foot-pounds of torque. Um, we got it out of the car uh, because we had some damage from the fire. We were doing some repairs on it, on the wiring harness and a couple other little minor hoses and, and simple things. So I figured I'd take the time to uh, do, do a couple health checks on it. Um, you know, see it, see what the health is of the bottom end without really tearing it down and, and spending the time and money to do that. So I figured I'd set my camera up and I would show you guys what I do. Uh, today I'm going to be performing a, uh, a leak down test on this motor. A uh, leak down test sometimes gets confused with a compression test. Uh, the difference is, is a compression test tells you the cranking pressure in the cylinder. So you'd pull all the spark plugs out, Put one of these little fittings. Oops, put one of these little fittings in the spark plug hole, okay, and crank the motor over with the starter. You have a little pressure gauge on there that says, you know, how much pressure the cylinder is building under cranking. Uh, that's good for a quick test. A leak down test tells you what's going on a little further on. Um, here's a little. Here's a little bit more to it. We have these two gauges on the whole setup with a little pressure regulator. And there's a pressure gauge right here, the first one, that uh, basically tells us how much pressure we're feeding into the cylinder. And this second gauge here tells us the percentage of air that's being lost uh, versus what's being pumped in. So it's basically it's just a percentage of how much air is leaking. Um, the difference, the, the main difference that I wanted to stress is a leak down test, well actually both should be performed when the motor's hot and when it's warm. Clearly it's not, it's out of the car, so it's cold, it's room temperature, so numbers are gonna be a little higher. We're gonna have a little bit more air leaking past the rings, um, and maybe even other things, we'll find out with the test, but uh, these tests really should be performed with the motor hot. I expect to see numbers three, you know, three to six percent higher on a cold motor versus a hot motor, and the reason that these numbers change is when a motor's hot, metal grows. Tolerances change, and there's essentially less blow-by, there's a less leakage. So we're gonna go ahead and perform a test on one cylinder here and uh, I'll show you how it's done. So first thing we're gonna do is grab a ratchet with a socket for the crank pulley so, we're, so we can spin the motor. Okay, we're gonna turn the motor clockwise and we're gonna work on number two cylinder right here. I'm gonna watch the valves and the rocker arms open and close. When I see both of them closing and pressure coming out of the spark plug hole, that means the piston is coming up the top dead center. Okay, so we're gonna thread this little hose in the spark plug hole, and you can rent these tools at just about any, any part store. We'll have these for rent or, or even to buy. Um, I suggest if you build a motor from the ground up and, and you're beating on it pretty hard, uh, that you buy one of these tools so you can kind of just keep an eye on the health of it, check it every, every so often. Um, so we're gonna, Turn the motor over with the crank, or with my ratchet here, and I like to keep my finger over the end of this tube. And I'm going to feel pressure being pushed out, I'm just going to want to lift my thumb up, and when I stop feeling pressure, that means the piston is at top dead center with both valves closed. So we're going to start rotating, and there's exhaust closed, so I'll let you hear. You can hear pressure coming out of this little tube. Okay, now I've stopped feeling pressure being blown out of this, this hose. I'm gonna go a little farther. Now I feel pressure being sucked in. That means the piston's on its way back down. So we're gonna reverse and kind of split the difference. So that should be close. Now, it's kind of a guessing game to get it I, just perfectly on top of that center. Uh, if you have a degree wheel with a pointer, that's how you can do it. But I don't have that, so we're just gonna kind of go by feel. Now I'm gonna grab my air hose for my compressor. Plug it on in here to the gauges. Okay, and we're just gonna plug it on in and slowly start to feed this thing pressure. And if we went too far past or after top dead center, it's just simply gonna wanna roll the motor over and we might have to redo the process over again. So let's hope we did it right. I'm gonna start feeding pressure in.
and I like to pressurize each cylinder to 100 PSI. It's important to do the consistent 100 PSI through all uh, cylinders so you get accurate readings on blow-by. So here's, here's our numbers right here. We have, and I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see. There's about 6% leak down on this number two cylinder. And if you hear air leaking, there's only three places it could really be going, well maybe four. That's past the rings down into the crankcase down in here it could be coming out the exhaust valve or it could be coming out the intake valve. And a way to, to, to check that is what I like to do is grab a, uh, where you go, here it is, a soft rubber mallet and just lightly tap the tips of the valve. You don't wanna smash them real hard. Just give them a nice little tap to where they pop open. That way if there's any debris in, in the, between the seat and the valve or the port, it just blows it out. Just like that, check it again, and it actually went down about a percent, so it's around about 5% or so uh, leak down, which is a great number. Typical numbers, you know, an okay number would be about 10% and under. Uh, anything in the 15 plus range, me personally, I would tear it down and diagnose what was leaking. But since we see about 5-6% on the cylinder, it's good, it passes, and we're just gonna to continue to go down the line to all the different cylinders and do the same exact process. If I see any numbers that are real high or, or that doesn't look right, I'm just gonna do what I just said, listen out of the intake valve or out of the intake manifold. Uh, if your motor's still in the car, open up the throttle body and put your ear next to it. You'll hear a pretty audible uh, hissing or, or like you know air noise being pushed through there. Same with the exhaust, or if you speculate that it's going into the crankcase, pull the dipstick out and put your ear close to the dipstick too. It'll be very, very easy to tell. Um, and fortunately, I actually did the whole test on, on the motor on each cylinder, and every cylinder is beautiful. It's within five to, five to 10 percent, so I'm happy. She's still healthy, and we're going to put this thing back together, stuck it back in the car, and go have some more fun with it. So I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or whatever, Feel free to uh, drop a 